Ever since Captain Ibrahim Traoré came to power in Burkina Faso in 2022, he has distanced himself from France and other Western countries. Traoré has often mentioned on several occasions that as long as Burkina Faso does not have an imperialistic mindset, there is no problem, adding that France was ineffective in helping the country fight a long-running anti-jihadist insurgency. The West is not happy that Traoré is trying to make his country 100% independent and free from Western predators. Burkina Faso is a former French colony that long relied on the support of French troops to fight their enemies. But after many failed coups against him, Captain Traoré pledged to sever all ties with France, seen as a colonial power that failed to contain extremists. In today's video, we will be telling you how the West has been trying to tarnish Traoré's image because of his stance. Before we ride on, hit the like button and subscribe to the new tourist channel if you aren't yet part of our community. Many Pan-Africanists like Patrice Lumumba, Muammar Gaddafi, and Thomas Sankara were assassinated because they fought to see the continent autonomous and free from the shackles of colonialism. Their main concerns were geared at making Africa economically and socio-politically fit to function without any Western intervention. Their ideas and moves posed a big challenge to Western influence, and they were often threatened even before their demise. Now, the West is behind Ibrahim Traoré because of the same problem. Traoré is following the footsteps of his predecessor, Thomas Sankara, the Marxist revolutionary who ruled Burkina Faso in the 1980s. Sankara worked ceaselessly to make his country independent and free from Western domination, just like Traoré is doing right now. At the age of 35, Traoré is the youngest president in the world and is currently building the first gold refinery in Burkina Faso. He has worked endlessly to preserve Burkina Bay resources from foreign exploiters. According to him, the West should be made to pay the fair market values for these natural resources, which will help Burkina Faso put itself out of poverty and become truly independent. The West doesn't want this. They want to keep Burkina Faso under their thumb and continue running her policies. A recent military coup in Burkina Faso was thwarted in January, and France, UK, and the US certainly planned it to stop the wind of freedom blowing around Africa. How long shall they terminate promising leaders in Africa? When Traoré was sworn in as president, he expelled all the French forces from Burkina Faso for sponsoring terrorism and causing instability. He removed French as an official language and adopted local languages. Ibrahim Traoré has survived seven assassination attempts from 2023 till now, reportedly orchestrated by the West, the latest being that of February 2024. It was allegedly reported that some soldiers and activists in the country who were involved had received funding for one of the attempts. The coup attempts against Traoré and his rulers have been thwarted severally by the country's intelligence and security services, and these express failed Western plans. Burkina Faso's military rulers say foreign officers and others had planned to seize power and plunge the country into chaos. Many people in and out of Africa have used their social media platforms to denounce the tarnishing of Ibrahim Traoré's image by the Western states. Traoré sought to form a coalition with Mali and Niger as part of a long-term goal of uniting the West African neighbors within a federation. In mid-September last year, the military leaders of these countries signed a defense pact. Some pro-French media operating in Burkina Faso were suspended for trying to tarnish the image of the ruling military regime. Many of them reported that there was discontentment and tension within the armed forces, and this turned out to be untruthful. France does not want to let Burkina Faso be alone. Bear in mind that violence has also surged under Traoré's rule. In fact, Burkina Faso has become a focus of the crisis in the Sahel region, an enormous swath of land that has been shaken by extremist uprisings and military coups. The West is using the UN and other aid agencies as references for their propaganda. Note that in December, Traoré expelled Barbara Manzi, a top UN official in the country asking her to leave immediately. Foreign Minister Olivia Rwamba said on state television that Manzi had raised the alarm about insecurity in the capital, Ouagadougou, without presenting any proof, even though the proclamation requesting her removal did not provide a reason. 
Local and international aid groups have accused both the extremists and government-affiliated forces of terminating civilians in Burkina Faso. Last year, the U.S. Department mentioned in a statement that it was concerned about actions by Burkina Faso's military government, such as the growing use of targeted force conscriptions, shrinking civic space, and restrictions on political parties. It went further by saying that these actions have the cumulative effect of silencing individuals who are working on behalf of their country to promote democratic governance. Cases of Burkina Bay civilians picked up and forced to join Western nations against their motherland have been recorded. Human rights activists, Razmin Zinaba and Baziru Bajo, and journalist Isaka Lingani, who were spotted last December, received a positive judgment from a court in the capital city, Ouagadougou. The court sided with them, stating that the orders were illegal. Despite the ruling, the three remain in hiding, fearing for their lives. Burkina Faso is one of the growing numbers of West African countries where the military has seized power. Many Burkina Bay have welcomed Traoré's security pledge with great enthusiasm. The streets of Ouagadougou have been decorated with Russian flags, alongside banners with patriotic messages prescribed on them. If Traoré should be the cause of violence, it is for the good of his people. Though the West argues that violence will only make people more frustrated and want to join terrorist groups. They are struggling to tarnish Traoré's image at all cost. In an interview broadcast with some media against a background of tension with France, Traoré highlighted that his country, Burkina Faso, is not the enemy of the French people, but of their policies. France withdrew troops from its former colonies in the face of mounting hostility after Captain Traoré seized power in September 2022, making him the world's youngest leader outside of royalty. Traoré's arrival has sparked great hopes among the people, faced with a tense security problem that his predecessor, Paul Henry Danaba, couldn't deal with till the end. He has actively sought international support, bolstering partnerships with regional forces and engaging in diplomatic efforts to address the root causes of instability. In a positive move, Burkina Faso received the first shipment of cutting-edge weapons under its new strategic equipment plan, a development that indicates a major improvement in its military capabilities. The freshly acquired arsenal was unveiled on January 12th, with President Captain Ibrahim Traoré presiding over the ceremony. He met Russian President Vladimir Putin at the Russia-Africa Summit in St. Petersburg in July 2023, and they discussed development and cooperation. The government has continued to seek a foreign alliance with Russia, leading to speculation that the Kremlin-backed Wagner Group could start operating in the country. He is even building a nuclear plant in conjunction with Russia. African and French observers say that faced with troubles, France is finally shedding its post-colonial tradition of franc freak a term that smacks of paternalistic influence and quiet deal-making amongst elites as its economic and political powers decline. An increasingly self-confident Africa looks elsewhere. Traoré advocates for African heads of state to stop being manipulated by imperialists, claiming that the continent can prosper by leveraging its abundant natural resources to build a more vibrant continent. Given Traoré's commitment to make Africa largely independent and less reliant on foreign aid, speculations insist that some of these inspirations could be triggered by the West. Traoré stands as a great leader that no one dares to deal with, in addition to his close relationship with Putin. Anyone who tries to put him down will face the consequences from Russia. He values Burkina Faso's development greatly. The realities of the job being done on the ground make it quite evident how much progress has been made. The roads were formerly hazardous, narrow, and in poor condition. But because of Captain Ibrahim Traoré's dedication, this reality has undergone a significant adjustment. Presidents Nana Akufo Addo of Ghana, William Ruto of Kenya, Paul Kagame of Rwanda, and Yoru Musfini of Uganda are other African leaders who have received threats from the West over the years due to their non-acceptance of pro-Western cultures and identities. Their political agenda is characterized by nationalistic approaches that seek to reduce reliance on foreign aid, especially Western assistance. After repeated military interventions in its former colonies in recent years, the era of France and the West as Africa's gendarme may be over. French President Macron's predecessors, including Francois Hollande, 
Nicolas Sarkozy, Jacques Chirac, and François Mitterrand had all launched new French military operations on the African continent. Macron did not. To him, France should focus on training and equipping allied countries' forces. President Ibrahim Traoré's military government has diversified its international partners, including contacts with Russia, Iran, and Venezuela. Traoré's interests in the continent ought to be fiercely defended and protected by Africans. As no white man will come directly to assassinate Africans, the true sons and daughters of Africa must make every effort to identify and deal with any traitors in their midst. Rather, it should be Africans versus themselves. The West will stop dictating what is beneficial or detrimental to Africa. Do you think the West will succeed in their quest to tarnish Traoré's image? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the new tourist channel. Turn on notifications too so you get notified whenever we upload videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.